Welcome to Character in Action with Matthew J. Norcross, the official podcast of the Seven Degrees of Change Foundation. Come journey with us on the real life stories of character in action. And now here's your host, Matthew J. Norcross. How fun. We're turning the tables on you a little bit today. I'm Robbie Dilmore. I get to host as we're interviewing the Phoenix himself. Like, how fun is that? And so we're going to get to the story behind the story or the the Phoenix and how all that really came about. And so, you know, Matt mm-hmm. is the host normally, Norcross, of this podcast. But today we want to turn that backwards and find out, you know, how the Phoenix actually came to be and that whole idea. So when you think of the Phoenix, right, what's the story there, Matt? Well, the story was, you know, I originally wanted to do this as a uh, bi- autobiography. You know, it was um, in development during my uh, senior year in college. And someone that my dad was working with um, right after I graduated said, um, you know, you should get into children's books. And that was when the story of the Phoenix began. And the reason why the Phoenix is a superhero is because, you know, kids love superheroes, right? The highest gross, one of the highest grossing film franchises of all time is the the MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm sure you know about right, that, right? Sure. That was how the story pretty much came about. And so in your own life, though, right? You were the right. Phoenix. And so can you tell our listeners that may not be familiar with your story, you know, how that actually started? What what happened when you were born and, and those kind of things? Yeah. Well, I ha- when I was about six Five, five or six years old, I don't know exactly, but what I do remember was I had severe, severe epileptic seizures, and it was just um, so miserable over there. And it was just so miserable having those horrible seizures, and um, those seizures ended up ha- having me develop Asperger's syndrome, and I didn't even, and what's interesting is, even though I actually had it. I wasn't even diagnosed with it until I was 17. Really? And, but what I do know is, um, I've learned differently from other kids throughout my life as a result of those seizures. And that's what got my, my parents into, um, starting a school, but it goes further than that. They were wanting to, um, find a school for me to go to, but they couldn't find one. They tried, um, a small cr- Christian school in High Point that was starting to um, open up back in, and this was back in 1996, actually. And um, it was then when my parents saw a documentary on Mother Teresa on what was then known as the Family Channel. Right. And, yeah. And um, I'm sure you remember the Family Channel, right? Sure. Um, but anyway, that was when uh, Phoenix Academy started. And ever since then, Phoenix has grown so big. Right. Really so big. your parents saw a need, right? Because the, yeah. the Christian school there really wasn't catering to what your needs were. And so for our listeners that don't know, what is Asperger's disease? Well, um, Asperger's, what I do know about it is I learn differently from others. And I have to, um, I ha- I have to be in a separate room where there's no noise all the time. And there are sometimes behavioral problems, which I've had to deal with a lot throughout my childhood. I'd say that I um, I pass with true colors, you know? Well, there was the idea of the Phoenix, right? So that it looked like your life was in ashes when you were struggling in those schools and whatever. But your parents wanted to see, right? Right. The, the Phoenix come out of the ashes. And so you not only obviously graduated from school, you went on to college? Yep. Coastal Carolina University, Conway. And, and so what did you study there? I studied communication. Study communication. And so, and you graduated? Yep. Class what, of 2017. And what's your degree in? My degree is in um, communication, while my minor is in um, interactive new media, basically. And so how cool that you actually have a chance to do this podcast right here. And, and so... You know, characters in action or character in action was, again, an an outshoot of this idea of the Phoenix, and it has to do with these different character traits. So can you kind of take us back to where you came up with the idea with a podcast or maybe just 
go back to the books and then take us into the podcast. Well, um, the books teach um, – each book teaches a different character trait. For example, one book um, teaches empathy. It's called Helping Jackie, and most of those um, – most of the characters we developed are based on people that I've known throughout my life. For example, Jackie is based on a, um, on a UNCG professor named Jackie Cimarelli. She was – she too was wheelchair bound, and it was all based on a horrible condition that she had that she ended up passing away from. And another example is um, Beth, who teaches trustworthiness, is based on my sister Mari. And um, th- th- these are just some examples of the characters that we developed. And so you develop these characters for your books, right? Correct. And, and so you saw these characters in these people, and then you you essentially. Um, took your Phoenix character, right? Correct. A- and created a storyline? Yep, exactly. A- along that character and that character trait. Yep, exactly. For example, um, if you if you look look closely at the books, there's a situation about to go on where, um, for example, someone is um, taking someone's crayon. For example, the book Cameron's Crayons, that's supposed to teach the trait of respect. Right. Right. And um, and one of the characters that we developed, which helps the Phoenix teach the trait that um, helps get the situation resolved. Right. Sure. And that that's the basis of these books. That is so cool. And so from the books, you guys decided to do a podcast, right? Yeah. Well, what got that um, what got the ball rolling on that was, you know, I um. My dad started listening to a um, podcast that I should not name, <laughs> and it, he got me into it. And then I started um, listening to a lot more podcasts. For example, you know Ben Shapiro. I'm sure you've heard of him. Sure. Um, I've also listened to a lot, a lot of um, podcasts from the Wall Street Journal. For example, Potomac Watch. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Potomac Watch is um, produced by um, Paul Gigo, but that's another story for another day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But anyway, so you started your own podcast to the, to kind of go through these character traits, right, one by one. Right. And, and so, you know, I thought it'd be fun to kind of take you through your um, idea of these character traits. Uh, so what's the first one that comes to your mind of the seven? The first one that comes to mind for me is um, respect. And a lot of people, and I've mentioned this a lot of times in my podcast, um, it seems to be a lost art these days. You know, with the uh, advent of social media, a lot, a lot of the, um, you, know, you know, a lot of YouTube videos coming out. And there's a lot of people have too much free time on their hands. People don't have, people don't think they have time to talk to each other face to face like we are now. They're on the phones all the time. They're on Messenger all the time. And there's a big risk of being just offensive, rude, and disrespectful, you know? Right. It's just... That- it's, it's really hard when you talk to somebody and they're checking their phone every 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and trust me, I'm, I'm no sane on this. I, I got to tell you, those little devices, they're, they're great and all, but there are a lot of setbacks, too. People... Uh, are on their phones all the darn time, you know? It's so, just Yeah. Who 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 was the character for your book that that for you defined respect? Well, her name is her name is Satomi and she's based on um a girl I briefly met at the Disney College program. Her name her name was Satomi. She's from Japan. Pretty she she was beautiful. Not not only she, but um the country of Japan as a whole, which I have a lot of respect for they, their, their whole society is built on respect and, and honor right yeah very and much honor. and there's a lot of other cultures that respect is a is a huge uh, consideration that's absolutely beautiful so what's the second trait that comes to your mind the second trait that comes to mind for me is responsibility for example let's just say um you're a child and you want to go to the movies right or you want the big video game for the Nintendo Switch. 
and you have a messy room, right? Yeah. Your room is your responsibility, and it's got to be spick and span in order to earn the privilege of, you know, going to the movie or getting the latest game for Nintendo, right? Yeah. Um, and it's j- just an example, you know? Oh, absolutely. So which of your, which character for you represented responsibility? Yes, Jackie represents re- responsibility. And, and h- how did she do that for you? She didn't really do it personally, but um, the people who did teach me responsibility were most members of my family. Oh, you know, yeah. My sister, my mom, my dad. And it was just um, a lot of the teachers in my life taught me responsibility as well when it comes to you know schoolwork. And the one thing you have to understand about responsibility is once you become an adult, it it hits you even harder because once you go to college, it it makes you drive it, it makes your drive even harder to um work very hard, right? Oh yeah, you got all these different responsibilities, right? It's it's my daughter calls it adulting. She does <laughs> Yeah. Adulting. <laughs> adulting, right. All these things coming at you that are just hard to face. Like you gotta deal with insurance, you gotta deal with and and, and obviously as you've gotten out on your own, you know, there's all sorts of new responsibilities, but it's cool that you're teaching that character trait. Yeah. And, and so what's the what's the next one that comes to your mind? Um the next one that comes to mind is fairness. And that's like I said in many of my um interviews with other with other guests, is um that's another lost art. People aren't very fair with each other anymore. Everybody gets a trophy, you know? And I hate I I hate to sound harsh when I say that, but it's it's a it's just a fact. You know, people people think everybody is a winner, right? But you win or you lose. It's fair, right? And um, I don't know. I can't really say much else about that. But um, the character that teaches about fairness is someone named Winnie. And oh, I like that name. Yeah, <laughs> it Win- makes sense, Winnie. It's actually um, it's actually based on an actual um, friend of my dad's that I met um, in, I believe, near Washington D.C. I don't remember the actual. Um, t- I don't remember the actual place where I met him, but he is an immigrant from the Philippines. And um, being fair is um, especially important to um, the people of the Philippines, I be- in, in my opinion, at least. In the book, the character Satomi it is, um, look, wants to look at a kaleidoscope, but um, the character Jackie isn't being very fair to her. Oh, really? Nope. And that that's when Winnie tells Joe tells Joe, who by the way is based on me. Oh really? Um, transforms into the Phoenix. And he tries to take care of this situation. So the Phoenix goes up to these two, right? And what? You 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 tell them to share? Is that what's Yeah, that's basically it. How about citizenship? Oh, citizenship. That's especially important. Um in the book Cameron's Vote, they the kids are wanting to, um, the teacher is asking who wants to volunteer to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, the lesson in that is in order to be a good citizen, you have to do what's best for your community and your country. And that especially includes wanting to um, lead the Pledge of Allegiance. And And if you ask me about the Pledge of Allegiance, not a lot of people, not a lot of um, institutions are Lead, are standing for that anymore, which is unfortunate, and and to me that that's that was one of the big things for when we start school every day. We stand, we always stand for the pledge of allegiance at Phoenix Academy as well. So, yeah, when your dad first came in the studio, I couldn't help but notice he wanted he wanted the American flag, which is up in the corner. Um, so, what does that what does that flag represent to you, man? Well, to me, that flag, um, it's, it's like any other flag. For example, um, the flag of Japan, they, they take big, pro- the people of Japan take pride in their flag. And, um, I'd say, I'd say the same thing, um, for 
the people of the UK or the people of, say, um, ma many countries in Africa. They take pride in their flags as well. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a beautiful symbol. There's no doubt about it. And so, I I love that. And how about empathy? Oh, empathy is especially important. And that's actually the first book that was published, Helping Jackie. And when it in Jackie's case, when it comes to um, you know people who are in wheelchairs, and like I said, she was that character was born with a horrible disease that made her wheelchair bound. It, you can't make fun of people like that. It's just not only is it really um, harmful to, to those people, but whenever you um, see people with disabilities, like you know people in wheelchairs, or in other cases people with um, missing le missing limbs or um, stuff like that, you gotta be empathetic to them. There's no way around that. Yeah, there's a challenges like that that go all on all the time, right? Correct. A and so what happens in your book w with that situation with her? Well, Nehemiah tells Nehemiah tells Joe um, what's going on with uh, Jackie. And um, the phoenix, Joe transforms into the phoenix and tells the other kid and tells the other kids what to do whenever um they will, they feel left out, right? The basic lesson of helping Jackie is you have to be empathetic to people, and when they want to um, join in the fun, you know, like playing game, when they want to play outside, you know, you got to find a way to help them fit in. So as you've had a chance to write about the Phoenix and all these different situations, and you saw um, Joe transform right. i love the way you say that he transforms into the phoenix what what does that actually look like to you in your own you know soul so to speak what what does it mean when somebody transforms into the phoenix um it means they're making a um big contribution to um their family their community um they're just making a trans big trans transformation in other people's lives you know I don't so, know how to exactly word that. Well, that's kind of the hero of the story, right? Yeah. And, and in its own way, right, it's kind of turning into Jesus. Yeah. Pretty, <laughs> you could say that. Yeah, it's exactly because, you know, there's a every, always a storyline is, 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 is God's story, right? And it's Correct. being told to us all the time. And so for you personally, when did you first remember turning into the Phoenix? Whenever, I, whenever people tell me that I may an impact on them, that is just incredibly humbling, you know? Well, it's, obviously, you know, you, you went to college to study communication. Right. You've, you've written these books, and you have this podcast. So, you know, you're, you're obviously doing all that in, a, in an effort to be a phoenix, right? Exactly. <laughs> to people that would begin to consider things like responsibility and caring Right. And, and all these kind of things. And, and so as you, you know, continue in uh, this field that you were given uh, or that God, you know, obviously gave you gifts in because you're obviously mm -hmm. a wonderful communicator. You've got a beautiful voice. <laughs> you know, what what would be your dream? Right. If you could see what God could could go with you on this adventure, where would you, where would you end up? Where Where are you headed? I would say that God put me in this path for a reason, to transform people's lives, you know? There were a lot of um, people that influenced my life, and, what, and what, I, what I hope people take away from these books is that um, these character traits are life skills that people can learn. Who have you seen turn into a phoenix that, that really— like, you know, you obviously you saw it first and then you got a chance to model it. Was there somebody in your life that you went, oh, yeah, well, that person turned into a phoenix and that's that's the person that I want to be? It, it, um, it was both of my parents, actually. I really do credit them for um, making Phoenix as big as it is. And their help, they, they made a big impact on our community and 
I'm really thankful for them for that. Oh yeah, when they started this school. So from your standpoint, right? You 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 coined that word and you know that your parents use that as the name for the school. What's behind that concept of Phoenix? Rising from the ashes. It's the Phoenix it's it's a mythical firebird that rises up from the ashes after it dies. So if you ask me, you could say that I rose from the ashes from those horrible seizures that I had and the Asperger's that developed. Right, right, right. And that's that's the whole, you know, became a theme for your life and, and your understanding, yeah? Yep, theme for my life and my understanding and especially those books. So I'm really, I'm really glad to be given this opportunity. Right, right, right. As as you begin to enter into this new podcasting adventure, so you've got how many episodes now? Um, so far, um, I have nine episodes published, and hopefully, there will be plenty more where that came from. So, so your your hope for that is you, you're lining up awesome guests, people that you. So, give us some sense of the people you've got coming. Well. There's Dr. Howard Buddy Coleman, who um, is the principal for the Middle High Campus of Phoenix Academy. He was a um, professor at UNC Wilmington and Coastal Carolina University. At Coastal, he um, taught educational leadership. And um, my mother, Kim Norcross, will also be a guest. She was one of the co-founders and the superintendent and principal of Phoenix before she retired a couple of years ago. But you're even talking about trying to reach out to people in the Wall Street Journal and stuff like that, right? Hopefully. So tell us about that. Well, um, well, my guess, what a guest I hope comes to the show is Kim Strassel. She's one of my favorite columnists. I like to read her um, articles every Friday whenever she has an article in the opinion pages. And another guest, another guest I hope comes is Greg Rolls, a great um a great entertainer from the Grand Strand, Myrtle Beach area. Really? Yes. And um, another guest I hope comes is Dr. Wes Fondren. He was a good mentor of mine when I was at Coastal, and he, he was a good he was a good teacher as well. And also Mark Walker, a con a great congressman, and um, also Ted Budd, cu- currently our U.S. Senator. And th- those are just to name a few. That's absolutely wonderful. Great. Matt, we're so excited to follow your podcast, and we're going from there. So, wait, wow, we're so honored that we could host today. But I'm going to let you close because you've got the magic words. All right. And thank you for listening. And always remember, everyone can be a phoenix.